Karen, first of all, I wanted to start with congratulations on passing your proposal defense. You must be very excited about that. I am so excited. I am just beside myself. I think I'm in that, what do they call that, cognitive dissonance. Like, I can't believe <laughs> that I'm at this okay. space right now. Why can't you believe that you've achieved this? Well, so I started my PhD program right before COVID. And then when the COVID pandemic hit and we were all kind of separated into our homes, I figured that things would start to slow down because we were still trying to figure out how to communicate, how to continue research, how to continue doing classes. And then I had some other circumstances in 20, early in 2022, my son was diagnosed with cancer and we were trying to navigate living in a rural community, commuting 500 miles away, taking care of my other children that don't have cancer. Um, so it was, it was a lot. I, I was also still teaching full time at the tribal college. I was teaching all the math courses and I just felt like I did not have time and space to really dedicate to any one thing because I, I was kind of in survival mode is what I think um, when I look mm. back at that time. It's, it's, it sounds like it. It, so, it sounds very, very difficult. And I guess, you know, maybe if you can take us back to, I think, you started working with us in July 2023 and yes. we're now in February 2024. Um, so it's just around, you know, nine months, uh, 10 months, maybe. What was the situation like back then? Was, was that sort of feeling of overwhelm and lack of focus, like the main reason why you decided to, to reach Definitely. out? Or? Yeah. So by that time, I felt like my clock was running out. I had exactly four years of funding. I was nearing the end. I had just finished my qualifying exam, which again, with all the external circumstances, it was quite challenging. So I passed the qualifying exam. My son was more stabilized. We had a better routine at home. But as far as my research, I felt like I was very disconnected. And communication with my research advisor, I felt like I was saying something and then I would get advice to say, do this, but the advice was very vague. And so I just, I needed more structure and more guidance. And I understood that because of, of the level that I was at, I didn't feel like I had the support that I needed. I needed more directed guidance. I was online looking for programs like, you know, how to write step-by-step. -step. I'm reading people's blogs about when I did my PhD dissertation, this is what I did. And I had even talked, reached out to an author that had just published her dissertation and she was, she's an author and she's doing keynote speaking. And I said, can you please help me? Cause my dissertation is similar to what yours is going to be. And the same, you know, she met with me on zoom once she said, here's my dissertation, take a look at it. And I just thought, oh my gosh, I have to piece through this and figure out how to, <laughs> how to do my own work. And so I was really, I was really looking for a community of scholars that were in the same place that I was that could give me some guidance and some direct feedback. So you mentioned this sort of like lack of structured guidance and looking for, you know, exact tips on how to do things. So can you maybe like give us an example of, you know, that sort of like structured guidance that you were looking for and, and, and you found with us? Yeah. So, I mean, so I've taken classes on how to write academic research, but not in my field. So I've, I took a course in the social sciences department on how to write academic research and how to synthesize ideas together. But then when it came to, I have a specific idea that I want to work in data science, computational science and engineering, but then it also overlaps with social science. And so I was having a very difficult time bridging that communication barrier. This is how social scientists talk. This is how data scientists talk. I'm in the middle. And so I wanted more guidance than just, can you make this more clear? I mean, that was kind of the feedback that I would get. Can you make this more clear? Can you be more specific? And I'm like, okay, well, I feel like I am being clear. I feel like I'm repeating myself over and over again. What are you, what exactly are you asking me to say? Um, mm. and, and again, I had somebody else's dissertation that I was reading and I'm like, I think I'm doing similar to what this other person is doing, but the communication barrier was just, it was overwhelming to me because I mm. felt like the feedback wasn't, was only sending me in these loops. And instead of trying to address the feedback, I spent a lot of time in like mental drama about, oh my goodness, I'm never going to finish and just feeling overwhelmed about running out of money with my financial situation after the year that we had had. So it was just, you know, again, just kind of spinning into that overwhelm because I didn't feel like I was moving forward. Mm, got it. And so can you give maybe an example of that, you know, 
structured feedback. I think you've been working with uh, Kalila Nelson, who's yes. one of our client success managers. So like, you know, how, how is that feedback sort of different that you've been getting? How oh is it more helpful? It's amazing. So the first thing that I did was I went through, I treated the course, the modules that you created, I treated those like a class and I would come to class. I would do exactly what the module said. I printed off the outline worksheet and I filled it in. I felt like I was going all the way back to my first semester. You know, what is your research topic? Where are you going to find all of your, um, where are you going to find all your literature? How is that literature aligned with different things? And I just, I went through every single thing and I rewrote everything that I had ever submitted. I just rewrote it from scratch. I just started all the way back at the beginning. And I remember I met with my advisor. So I started this program in July and I remember I met with my advisor. I want to say it was right after the holidays, sometime in September. And I was sharing my screen, but I had some of those worksheets up. And he was like, what is that? What do you have going on over there? I said, oh, these are my worksheets. I've been working with a coach to kind of help me reform up my writing. So that's why I just wanted to talk to you to make sure that I'm still on the same page about my research questions. And I want to rephrase them, reframe them. And he's he was like, oh, okay, this is, this is really, this is really good. Oh, does, do you have a worksheet that does this and does this? And I said, I don't know. I just started the program. So he seemed very, very curious about something that had changed for me. I mean, it was obvious that from whatever madness I was doing before to now, it was like, wow, she's, she sounds very clear, very concise. And then when I turned in that first draft to Kalila, she highlighted a sentence and she asked a specific question. This sentence needs to answer this question. Oh, okay. Okay. That's no problem. And I went back through and I said, okay, well, I, this is the question that it should answer. And I rephrased how it went. And then she would group certain paragraphs together and she would say, these two paragraphs need to be synthesized in such a way because it's too wordy. These are the spaces that are too wordy. I mean, it was so specific. And then she took the themes that I was interested in. I said, these are the four themes that I really want to highlight. And she says, okay, this would be a great place to elaborate more on that second theme. This is a great place. And then when I submitted the, the first draft, I made all my revisions the first draft to my advisor and then he kind of he didn't go through the whole thing but he just kind of broadly said make sure to mention one two and three and then I sent it to another person on my research committee and they said oh make sure to mention one two and three then I sent that feedback to Kalila and I said listen they're telling me to do this I felt like I already did this please help me so that I don't feel overwhelmed and she said no problem and the feedback this comment talking about this section right here make sure. And I mean, she just told me exactly where to address each of the comments. She told me exactly which sentences were coming off either too wordy or unclear, or if there were things that I was repeating, but not addressing others. She was able to really clearly communicate exactly what the feedback from my advisor was saying and what I actually needed to do. So it was not like, oh my goodness, they don't like me. I'm never going to get done. I can't write. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, it was it was just so refreshing to be like, oh my gosh, if you do exactly what she says. And I, I remember going into a meeting after I passed and I told everybody at that meeting for uh, in, in one of the group sessions, I said, if you do exactly what your coach says, you will pass. Just do exactly what they say. If they say, take the sentence out, take it out. If they say, add a sentence and find two right, just do it because your the communication between you your research and your committee will be so crystal clear. It was just, I, I'm just so forever grateful to see that progress happen literally overnight for me. Amazing. Amazing. And uh, yeah, as I was telling you kind of um, when we when we first connected, that's, you know, for me as well as the, you know, as the founder of the company, that's kind of, you know, what I suppose makes us makes us tick and makes us want to kind of continue doing what you're doing to, to what we're doing to see like transformations like um like yours and and really what you were saying about feedback it's something that you know we kind of try to do a lot of training as well with Kalila and with the other coaches that work and looking at each other's feedback and one of the things that we always emphasize is just be specific don't tell people this is not clear make it clearer because that's not good feedback i mean if you knew how to make it clearer <laughs> you would have already made it clear so right just tell them specific don't do it for them but tell them specifically like this paragraph is not clear because it lacks a topic sentence and then it's not developed from general to specific and it's too long. So you should do this and this, right? That's kind of good feedback. And um, so, um, so yeah, that's kind of what we try to emphasize as well. But I'm curious because like, you know, at the beginning, you were also saying that, you know, you're kind of in between two disciplines, you know, uh, computational sciences and engineering, but also some, a little bit of social sciences. And one thing that, 
and I guess people often ask us is like, how does this feedback work? Because like, you know, if we, I, I don't know anything about computational science and kind of need, neither does Karila, right? So how, how did you find that aspect, I suppose, to, to get feedback from somebody who's just not in your field and doesn't know anything about it? You know, so I'll be honest, when I first started the program, I needed to do, I kind of skipped to one of the parts that you had talked about, the mindset, because I was in a very defensive place, right? I had felt like I was being clear, I was doing what my advisor was asking, but I wasn't moving anywhere. And so then when I joined the program at that point, I was like, well, I mean, <laughs> if other academics can't read my writing and understand, then surely I'm not being clear. And so I felt like even if she was from arts and sciences or anywhere, I understand that the purpose of communicating any kind of research is so that you can be inclusive to help the broader community. And so I was in a completely different space. With that said, the feedback, you know, it's not any different. I mean, I teach math for a living and my my specific niche, I suppose, is adult learners who have some kind of experience with trauma, meaning that they had a negative experience in math in the past and now they're trying to come back and they know that passing math is a is a barrier for them. And so it would make sense that if you want to explain math to somebody that doesn't um, identify as a math person, you're going to need to use language that feels like it includes them and not speaks over their head. And it it's the same. I, I don't even think about the fact that Kalila might not be an engineer. I feel like she's an academic and she's critiquing my writing and helping me to be more clear as a communicator. And the feedback, you know, she doesn't need to know what all the definitions are. And even if she doesn't, she says you need to make sure that this addresses this and it, and it always works. Yeah, I, I found as well that, you know, when I when I read work um, from other fields, which is, you know, most often what I what I do is that, you know, if if I can understand what you're talking about as a computational engineer, that probably well, that definitely means that when your professor reads it, it will be so crystal clear to them that, you know, you will pass with flying colors, you know, because you know, as an outsider, I, I, you need to make it even clearer to me in terms of the flow, coherent story and, and everything. So, you know, I sometimes find that if an outsider can understand it, then, you know, anybody in your field will understand it even better, which is, you know, I suppose the purpose of, um, academic communication, you know, I do. It's an interesting thing as well about, about mindset, you know, and about just, you know, and then doing, kind of following the advice that that you get um why why do you think like kind of the mindset is is so important here and why why did you start with kind of working on the on the mindset so i so i'll be honest i really felt like that at first i thought that's what i needed i need a mindset coach because i felt overwhelmed i was having the home situation and then the finance situation and then the timeline situation And I didn't feel like I could actually focus. But at the same time, I didn't want just general coaching. I had this very specific goal. I want to finish my PhD. I want to do it before I run out of funding. I want to, right? And so when I looked at, well, what is keeping me from taking action? I know what to do. I can Google it. I can watch YouTube tutorials. I can join these writing groups where you sit on Zoom together in um, in like a little hub and everybody's working independently, but that wasn't helping me to move past the things that were blocking me. I had these beliefs in my mind about what I was making feedback mean, right? I was making feedback mean that I was a terrible person, that I didn't know what I was doing. And so that that was blocking me from actually reading the feedback, doing what they said and taking action. And so I knew that I had to get that figured out because I can make, you know, I have calendars, I have appointments on my calendar, but I wasn't honoring what I was putting on the calendar as far as working towards my work because I was like, it's, this isn't going to matter. This is a waste of time. I'm going to do all this work and they're still going to send it back and say it's not clear. And so I really knew that I needed help figuring that out so that I was going to take action to move towards my goal. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I also personally find that, uh, yeah, the belief system that, that you have and the stories that we kind of tell ourselves, you know, like what you said about the clients that you work with, those people mm -hmm. that are tra traumatized really by the previous negative math experiences. I'm sure they, they probably telling themselves a story that they're bad at maths. 
That's exactly know, that may be <laughs> less intelligent or whatever, yeah. right? Until you tackle that belief, it's very difficult to to actually learn maths or whatever right. else it is that you're telling yourself a negative story about, right? Because yeah, if you profoundly believe that you're just bad at maths or less intelligent because of those negative experiences, then you're not mm -hmm. going to take action to actually learn it, right? Right, right. Yeah. And that was me. I'm like, oh, okay, well, I guess I'm a terrible writer or I'm never... I mean, I just, there were, I can't even imagine because I don't even have the stories anymore. But I mean, there were so many, so many stories that I had. And I'm like, I can't take action if these stories keep looping. I have to get this figured out. And one of your, your program was one of the few programs that there are lots of programs that say, step one, take out your pencil and write an introduction. And, you know, here's how you format a paragraph. But you really, the program is really holistic, right? You've thought of all the parts that would keep a graduate student from meeting their goals, from the mindset to the specific feedback with the coaching and then the, the weekly meetings and then, you know, the feedback turnaround and then the curriculum. I've, you know, again, I've taken courses, I've been taking classes for years in, in academia. And this was one of the first ones that literally tells you exactly what to do and the worksheets and you just follow the worksheets and then use that worksheet to build on the next part. I mean, it's just, it's a really great program if you are completely lost, overwhelmed, or you feel like you're so far in and you want to go back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Fantastic. So what's, you know, you've passed the proposal defense now. Um, what, what's next? Now you've got, you've got the structure, you've got the mindset. So what, what are you currently working on and what, what's, you know, what are you looking forward to finishing? I think right now I'm in this cognitive dissonance because now I went from successfully defending the, the proposal to I'm, I'm scheduled to graduate in April. We're already like working on chapter two and chapter three. I mean, it's the, the calendar that I have now has gone from being just this academic in this cave to I'm being invited to be a keynote speaker at Stanford. So I've been invited to Johns Hopkins to speak. So I feel like I'm kind of in awe at how fast it, it happened. So it was like you defended on the 12th and of January. And from, Jan from February all the way to June, I have conferences and keynotes. You know, you were just talking about the... The keynotes um, that you've been invited yeah. in, I didn't know about that. So it's like Stanford, John Hopkins. Yes. So there and then Washington, D.C. I'm being asked to come to speak there. And then in Albuquerque, New Mexico, there's a tribal college research convening that they want me to come to. I and mean, they're even asking me some advice about what what other sessions should we have? And I gave them a list and they're like, these are fantastic sessions. <laughs> so I mean... I think for me, all of the mindset things, all of those, those things that were blocking me from passing that proposal, once I was over that drama, it really opened up all these opportunities that I, I'm having a hard time saying no, because I'm like, wait, I had to finish the dissertation work first. Um, but we have the calendar all set for when I'm going to submit the dissertation and defend and I'm graduating, I'm participating in commencement in April. So, I mean, from that time, Everything is moving very, very fast, but I don't feel, I don't feel overwhelmed because I feel like I know exactly what to do. I have the support in the community and it's, it's time, it's time. So I'm just, I'm excited. Amazing. Amazing. I'm very excited for you, Karen, as well. Uh, it's fantastic, fantastic achievements So congratulations, but really, you know, all the credit to you as well for, you know, for tackling those mindset issues and actually taking action, because I think that's, that's often the most difficult thing. And, you know, it's happened to me as well. I think it happens to everybody where, you know, you can get all the, all the best advice in the world, but if you don't take it and you don't take action on it, then things won't change. And sometimes that, that mindset shift is like the most difficult thing. And then actually taking action day in, day out is the most difficult thing, you know, because again, you, yeah, you can have the best program and advice in the world, but it's you really taking the action. So, so yeah, all the credit to you and, and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for this program. Like I said, I, there isn't anything like it out there. So I'm just, I'm so glad that I stumbled upon it. But, um, you know, I do want to say that success wants to find you working. And so I think that was the reason why once I started taking deliberate action, it seems like, oh my gosh, all these things are coming. I think that all these opportunities have been waiting for me and success wants to find you working. And so once I got to work and I had that community, it was, you know, this is how it was meant to be.